Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today we have a, a very cool looking puzzle here and it's a, it has a nice um, nostalgia reference for me. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have also probably know what this is, but it's called Companion Cube by Gerhard1963. Um, Portal and Portal 2 actually were some of my favorite games a few years back. Obviously it's been a while, um, but this one is, it, it, the second I saw it, I, sa I just had to give it a try. Uh, see what it come out to be. I'm sure it's going to be a great puzzle because everything I've done so hard, so far from Gerhard has been great. Uh, with that said, um, let's jump into the rules. As always, the link will be in the description below to uh, for you guys to jump along and play along. So let's get started. Uh, first off, <clears throat> what do we have? We have standard Stoke rules apply. So every row, every column, and of course, every three by three box contains the digits one through nine once each. Then we've got something called a lovely whisper. So shown as pink lines, and all of these are, lines are pink. Adjacent digits along a lovely whisper line must differ by at least six. Okay, so we're looking at a, a variation of the uh, German whisper or a variation of a Dutch whisper, however you want to look at it. Um, instead of five or four, these two digits must be separated by at least six. So. And then we have cages, so digits and cages cannot repeat and must up to the value shown in the upper left corner of the cage. So we can pick any one of these. Let's look at this 14 cage. These three digits, whatever they are, must add up to that 14. And those are it. Those are our uh, different rule sets. Again, a lovely whispers is an, a new rule set in terms of thing I've ever seen. But like I said, it's, it's kind of a, just a variation, a slight variation on German or Dutch whispers. So with that said, Let's jump into this one and see if we can get this thing figured out. So first is first. Where the heck are we going to start? Well, it looks like there's going to definitely be some uh, work here on our corner pieces, the outside of our companion cube, uh, because we're going to have digits here that must be a certain amount away from each other. So what is our maximum and our minimum, I guess is going to be the best way to look at it. And we can, we can take what we learn in one corner and probably apply it to all others. That's why I want to kind of get an idea of what the min max is. So now for digits have to be six apart from each other, they cannot include four five or six. Now German whispers, obviously you couldn't have a five, uh, but you could have four and six because four would be able to match up with a nine and six would be able to match up with a one. But if there's six apart, that doesn't work. So you're looking at a one, two, three, seven, eight, nine type of situation. So what is the absolute maximum you can ever put on these two? It would be a three, nine, which would be a 12. Now the absolute bare minimum is a one, seven, which is eight. So we're somewhere between eight and 12 is where we are living here. Now I'm wondering if, the, if these corners are gonna be the best place to start or maybe these guys here. And, or the edges I should say. And it might be the edges now that I see that there's a 12 down here. Now this 13 cage is, I'll come back to that 12 cage in a second, but the 13 cage is kind of right on the edge of what is possible because we could still have the three nine and obviously get 12 and we just put a one in here so this is going to be a low digit at the end of the day it's either i think one two or one two three four or five i think would be the bare minimum because eight is the, the least we can possibly put in there but if we look at it in terms of this 12 cage we now have the exact same situation, but we have one, first off, one digit less. So we can never have the nine three. So these are going to be from one, two, seven, and eight. And we're looking at, at most now, a nine. Well, that's not true. At most, we could have the two and the eight, which is a 10. But we actually can't do a two eight. Because if we did a 2, 8, that would be 10. This would have to be another 2. So really, the, the maximum we can put in here is a 9. Which means this has to at least be a 3. And, well, 
is it three and four, right? Because seven, one would give us to eight. So really the only options here seem to be three and four. Now, what does that do in terms of what this can be? Now we said it can't be eight, two, so it could be eight, one, which ends up being the nine, which goes with the three. Now it could be a seven, two, which is also nine, it goes with three, or it's a seven, one, which is the eight, which goes with the four, okay? So there isn't actually quite, a, there isn't, at least not currently, there isn't a way that I can see to reduce this down to a, a minimum here. So, and I think we're going to have the same thing with these side corners, or the side, side corners, that's a wonderful combination of words there. These, uh, the, the, the side cages, because we're just going to, as we get higher and higher, we're going to kind of be to the point where we have more options until we get so high where the options become less again, if that makes any sense. But so like here, the bare minimum, or the, the, bare, the, the most we can ever put on here again would be a nine and three, which is 12. So we're looking at least five here. And it could probably go a bit higher. What's the minimum we can put on here and still be able to add something in? No. But already I'm kind of at a bunch of digits because I know a 7 in here should be able to work. So we could definitely put like a 2.8 to get a 7. And... Yeah, I think that one's going to be too much. So let's let's take a peek elsewhere again. We have a 5 cell 21 here, which isn't quite large enough as a bare minimum because we could 5 cells if you add up 1 2 3 4 5 is 15. We end up having a 20 three or sorry, 24 left over in four digits again we can make that in multiple ways so i don't know if that works all that well so maybe we need to look at our opposing digits and then use some sort of coloring system to figure out where our mins and our our lows and highs must be because as we know in german whispers whatever you put on any specific part of a German whisper, the next one is going to be the opposite. So if we were to have a high here, this would be low. If this was low, this would be high, and it would keep alternating between those two. The same isn't true on a Dutch whispers because you can't always hit the five and then uh, continue downward. So you can do like nine, five, one sort of thing. But in a lovely whisper, we are the, the, the differences are higher than a German whisper, so it's going to effectively work the same in this instance as a German whisper would. So what that essentially says is we're going to have our highs and our lows. We don't know which one's which, but they're going to be in this organization, I guess is the best way to put it. And what does that do for us? Now we're also going to know we're going to have one high and one low with another low. And when we're talking about highs and lows, well, we have, we have to actually stop for a second and, and clarify what a high and a low really means in this puzzle, I think. Because it's slightly different than what we would think of in a German whisper. Now, we still always know that you can't have a five on these like we would a German whisper. We also know you can't have a three and a four. So do we want to go down the rabbit hole of saying that lows are only one, twos, and threes, and highs are only sevens, eights, and nines, and then consider four, fives, and sixes all to be a mid. So it's almost like it's a um, an entropic type of rule. We have lows, mid, is it anthropic? Lows, mids, and highs, something like that. What do we know about that? Well, I guess we know there's a low and a high here. 
If we just focus on the lovely whisper at the moment, we know there's a low high here. We know there's a low high here. We know there's a low and high here. That's all of our lows and highs. If we think about them in that instance that I just said, that's a one, two, three, and seven, eight, nine. So therefore, these digits would have to be all of the mid digits, the four, fives, and sixes, which means this would just have to be a four. And these two would have to be a five, six pair. Now, if we know this is a four, the only way to make this cage now work is if this is a seven, one pair, which equals eight, and therefore the four gets you to 12. So we can do that. That's something. Now, can we do the exact same thing all of these we can because we're going to have the same situation we've got a high and a low a high and a low and a high and a low. that's all three of our highs and lows so these remaining digits must all be mids so therefore these are from four five six these must all be mids they're four five six these must all be mids they're four five six let's put those in there and see what happens because now that we've essentially assigned digits to some of these cages, we might be able to get into a much further reduction as to what some of these other instances could be. And what would be case in point of that? Maybe it's gonna be one of these sides, because we know the bare minimum of what we could possibly put in these two is going to be one and seven, which is eight. That's the minimum. Now we can't do that on the 17s because if we have eight as our minimum, we'd have to have nines to fill the gap. Next step up would be nine. We can't do that because again, you have to have eight. So we have to at least get to an 11, which means what? Why is that? Why did I have that there? That's, I think that was just an accidental click. Uh, so the bare minimum we need to put now on here is an 11, just to get anywhere. Now, 9 and 3 gets us just there. 9 and 2 would be the other. Well, 9 and 3 gets us to, obviously, to 12, which is high enough. 9, 2 would get us to 11, which is just high enough question is we can we can't go any higher so it has to be one of those two so there's always a nine in one of these and this now cannot ever be a four because we can't ever get this up to 13 so this is not four and the same is going to be absolutely true here so we can kind of make those determinations which means this is a four which means this is a four because we couldn't ever make the fours work in this cage or this cage, and, there, and this one can't be because we already figured out that this one isn't. So of the four or five sixes, this is the only place it can go, which then removes this option, and therefore this was the only one that could have a four. Okay, so now we've got it somewhere where we can look a little bit further here. Again, we, we've put a four in this cage now, so these two digits must equal nine. That's all they can do. So it's either going to be a what well, has to be nine period this, there's no flexibility here so seven one obviously doesn't work it's only eight so we're going to have to have something that's one step above that so it's going to have to just be eight one because we can't do two seven because two and seven aren't far enough apart from each other and we can't put a nine on there because it would be nine and a zero to get to the 13. Okay, can we do similar elsewhere? This has to equal 10. Again, 1, 7 doesn't work. 2, 8 does. And 9, 1 does. So we have a couple of options there. And what else do we have? If we have to have a nine on one of these, the other two are going to have to be the minimums, right? So we're going to have to have 
or another way to look at it is we're going to have to have a one on one of these two. And we're also going to have to have a seven on one of these two. Now, the one and the seven have to go together because one and seven are the, mat the six apart. So we can't ever put, I think this is correct. We have to be able to match the one and the seven because otherwise we can't ever put a seven on these and have it work. It's probably the better way of thinking about it or verbalizing it. Because if we put, let's say we put the one with the eight, obviously we can't do it down here, but because of other reasons, but just thinking about it, if we had a one eight pair down here, that would force a seven up here with a digit that it can't work with. Can't go with two, three, four or anything else. It has to go with the one. So that also is going to say that the eight must go with a two. I think. Because now that we've removed the one from the, uh, the, uh, the equation of one of these, the next possibility is going to be an eight, which we say has to go on one of these as well, because the nine is already given. So seven, eights, and nines are our highs. We've already said seven has to go with a one. We already said there is a nine, so the eight has to be on here. So there has to be an eight, two pair. And there also has to be a seven, one pair, which means this is going to have to be a nine, three pair. Now, if we know this is a nine, three pair, that's 12. So therefore, this has to be a five. It's going to force a few digits around the bend. Now. I can get rid of, well, I'll leave the coloring up here just in case it does come into play in a, in a later event here. Now, the question is, can we determine where the 1, 7 and the 2, 8 goes? I don't think we can, because this could be 1, 7 or 2, 8, and this could just be the other side of it. I guess maybe better way to start looking at it now is to start looking at what these other corner pieces can be. Because again, we're looking at, we must have these two digits equal 10. One seven clearly can't get you there. Two eight could, and one nine could. We know this can't be nine. This can't be 9, this one can't be a 1, because it's either the 2, 8, or the 1, 9. What else does that show for us? It means that the one of these is a 7, I guess, as well. The 7 had to go with the 1. So this would, if a 7 was here, it would be 7, 1, 8. And this would be a 2. If the 7 was up here, it would be 7, 1, 9. And this could be a 2 or a 3. Don't know that we can, can we make that determination there? I don't know that we can. So let's look elsewhere for a second. Like Oh, maybe this one is even better, because we know this is a 5, so we have to get up to 12, and we already said the only way to ever get up to 12 is a 3, 9. So let's put that in. That would, it's the exact same thing that happened up here. I just hadn't looked down here just yet. Now, again, we have to get to 11 in this 17 cage, because we already have a 6. And the only way to get to 11 would be a 9-2, right? Because we can't use the 8 because we'd have to pair it with a 3. And 3 and 8 aren't 6 apart, so it just has to be 9-2. And we have a 3-9 looking here, so this must be 2 and this must be 9. Uh, that can't be 9 anymore. We're gonna, I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to figure out one of these... Uh, types of situations where we know which one's the high and which one's the low, and then it might uh, piggyback and create some other things. These two, what must they be? 
in the row, we are left with one, seven, and eight. Now this clearly can't be a one, and it also can't be a seven because this two is only five away from seven, so this is eight, which means this is one and eight. And we just, I think we just found this, what I was saying, where I would start piggybacking along. This therefore has to be seven. Eight plus one plus four is 13, so we're working there. Now we said the eight had to go with the two on the lovely whisper because we have to leave the seven. We could also just say, where does the seven now go in this column? That, that would be another way to look at it. But what we had previously determined was the, the eight went with the two and then the seven had to go with the one. So the seven goes here, the one goes here, the nine goes here. This has to be from two or three. So we'll put those in. Now, this can't ever be a nine again. Or never could be, I guess is the better way to put it. Now, interestingly, looking up here, we know there has to be a seven in this row somewhere. And it can't be any of these, so it must be on this, which means that the seven must be paired with a one because it's the only digit that it can go with. And it can't go here because if it did, we'd have to put a one here and a two here the two is not six away from a seven. So this is one, this is seven, which means these are not one, which means they're also not nine. So this ends up being a two, eight pair. This ends up being the three. Now this has to be at least six away from one. So it creates the eight. This has to be a two because the one is no longer an option. And the only other digit to go that can go with an eight is a two. That forces this to be what? Three? Yes, it's a three. Okay. We have made progress, at least in the, the surrounding of our companion cube. Now we've got to try to get into the middle of it, it seems. And I'm wondering if there's anything useful in the world of Sudoku at the moment that we can translate into our part here. Now we know there has to be a one in one of these. Do we know anything else? Because that is starting to get to a good point. If we can make further reductions as to what can go in here, like let's say this couldn't be a one, we now know that these are all the low digits. It seems somewhat likely that that would be the case, but I, well, let's think about that. Can these ever be high digits? If they are high digits, they have to be eight and nine because we can't use a seven. Well, the problem is we already have an eight up here. So these cannot be high. These must be the lows. So I'm gonna put our low digits in. Now we obviously know these can't be twos because we have a two looking at it and we have a two up here like we already said. Okay, so let's get rid of these markings. In. This can't be a one or a two, so it just is a three. This can't be a three or a one now, so it is a two. This can't be a two here or a three, so it's a one. This can't be a one or a three, so it's a two. And we are making good progress. This can't be three. It could still be one or two. Now, the next thing to look at is the, the opposite side of our spectrum. We know these are all high digits, but we're going to have some restrictions because we have some low digits that are inserted here already. So let's put them in. We can only, the only digit we can put next to a three, obviously, would be a nine because there's a so these have to be nines because both of them borders a three. This can't ever be a seven because it borders a two. We know this can't be a nine anyway because of this or this. This can't be a seven or a nine, so this is an eight. Now, if that's an eight, this can't be a three, so it's a one. This is a three. So our coloring actually did come in handy. I'm glad I left it. Just, it it reduced one step in the, the puzzle here. This, since that's a three, this must, we could have actually seen that previously, that this had to be a nine, just hadn't gotten to that point yet. This has to be a nine. 
And what else? I think we're going to end. Oh, we can't have a nine here. So that does. Uh, I was looking at another way. It's like, I don't think we're ever going to have the possibility where this isn't like the seven to be able to match up with a couple of ones. But we didn't have to go down that logic train because we already have a marking of a three nine here, which forces this to be an eight. Now, if we have the nine and the eight, this must be seven. Now, if this is a seven, these both have to be ones, and one of them already is. And that two here says this must be an eight. So we've got a ton of digits now. Can, has anything occurred in what I've just put in here to start differentiating these guys? Yes, one of them has. This is a three. This is a nine. Again, we can look back at our math and see that these are all adding up as they should. Uh, doing a quick scan just to make sure that is the case. And it does appear to be so. This nine sees this one, so three and nine. We don't have a one or a seven or a two or an eight looking at these just yet, but I think we're pretty close to getting into the world of Sudoku. Although, maybe this is a one. I think we're going to have an X wing on ones, though. Yeah, so we've got. One of these is one and one of these is one. That's the only ones left over. I think we're gonna we're gonna run in that kind of situation with the rest of some of these digits. Now the twos I can't I mean I can put it there there has to be a two here, but the other twos can go in any of these, so I can't really create that sort of situation. But we can put a three here. Two, there has to be a three here. And we're down to one last three to put in. So we got all our threes. So that's good. Let's look at our fours. And what we'll probably end up doing is is maybe, depending on what these fours do, we might then just switch to regions that only have a couple of digits left. And there is probably some way to start, to, or rows or columns, uh, that we can therefore determine what needs to be what. And I'm sure this 21 clue is going to come in in the end to help us uh, determine the final layout. Uh, I don't see anything on the fours, so I have less hope that this method is going to get us much further. But we'll take a gander just to make sure. Yeah, the sixes don't see anything really. What else do we have? We can get, we can get a seven. And a couple sevens, actually, but we're going to end up again with some X-Wings left over, which aren't super helpful. Let's look at our eights and nines before we move on. What are we missing? An eight here, because none of those could have been eights. That eight there is now going to look in here and get us this guy, and that's going to break up our two eight, which is nice. That might be enough for our twos to finalize as well, because our eights are done. Let's look at our twos again real quick. Yep, this is a two. None of these are twos, so this is a two. And that should be it for twos. And then we'll look at our nines, and then we should have everything we need to finish this thing. Uh, this must be a nine, and this must be a nine. So now let's just start filling in the gaps, I think. Or we could try to look at this 21 cage, but I think we're, it might be better served to look at some of these other instances before we come back to this, because it still seems like there's plenty of possibilities that might be available here. Um, so let's just do that. These have to be from four and five. Of course, that doesn't give us anything. Well, actually it does. It gives us this digit, which must be a six which is then going to give us this digit, which must be five. These two digits, we need four and six, so we can put the six and the four in. This digit is now a given five. This is a given four. These two digits must be from five and six. We have a five here, so we get six and five. These two digits must be from four and uh, six. No cross-reference there just yet. What about these two guys now? 
they have to be from four and six as well. We've got a six over here, so let's put those in. Uh, this is a one or a seven because of this row, but there's nothing else looking at it. These two digits here, let's see what we got. Five and six, and surprisingly, we don't have anything there. Yeah, I think what it's gonna it's gonna be this guy is gonna end up probably finalizing everything we need. So one seven and something else a four. This can't be a four. This oh wait, I didn't even see this column. This just is four. And this is a one seven pair. And I was gonna see again if we had anything. So we have a five six that goes here, but there's no fives or sixes looking at it. I think we're going to have the same type of situation here where we may have to be able to do, reduce some options, but I don't know that we're going to get something. So we again, we need five six. No, we can get something. We know the seven has to go in this column and it can't go here, so it must go here, which means these are fives and sixes. And those are not looking anything so let's let's go here because i think this is going to have to do what we need it to do so we've got 15 right now nine plus two plus four so we need six more the only way it's ever going to happen if this is a five and this is a one and that's going to break it wide open so there we go that's all we needed let's finalize this six four six and we get a five and a four and cool and good. <laughs> I love that. I love, I love when creators put these um, personalized messages in the congratulation or the, the finalized area. I've only seen a few people do that. I, and Gerhard is one of them. Um, so I absolutely appreciate that. Um, anyway, this was an awesome puzzle. Again, a bit of nostalgia for any of you who have played uh, Portal. It was a nice, also slight difference to our normal variant of like a German whisper, that sort of thing. Just added a little bit different tweak to, uh, to that variant. So awesome. Love the puzzle. Hope you all did too. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.